Hi, I'm Dr. Bob Javits from Tenafly Pediatrics, and today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about something you may have heard on the internet called dry drowning or secondary drowning. Uh, these two terms refer to a drowning episode that occurs hours to as long as a day after a submersion underwater. Um, so first let's talk about exactly what these terms mean. Uh, dry drowning is often used to refer to a situation where a child is held underwater and inhales water. That water then irritates the vocal cords. Uh, when the vocal cords get irritated, they actually start to snap shut, and they can actually close off the entire trachea. When the trachea is closed, obviously that's the windpipe, and that doesn't allow you to breathe, um, and that can lead to the child falling into unconsciousness, and in severe cases can even lead to death. The term uh, secondary drowning often refers to a child who again has been submerged underwater, inhales water. That water is irritating to the inside of the lungs. When the lungs get irritated, they actually start to secrete fluid into the air sacs called the alveoli. When those alveoli fill up with water, then the body can't properly exchange carbon dioxide and oxygen, and again the child will start to have trouble breathing and can fall unconscious and in severe cases could again lead to death. Now, it's important to note that these cases will not occur if you just slip and fall in the bathtub and inhale some water. For these cases to occur, the child has to be held underwater for an extended period of time, not necessarily long enough to become unconscious like in a case of regular drowning, but definitely long enough that they're struggling underwater. So if your child slips and falls in the tub or even has their head fall underwater while they're swimming and they cough and sputter a little bit afterwards, you're not going to have to worry about dry drowning. Um, but if your child has a near-drowning episode where they've been held underwater for an extended period of time, then you do have to worry about it. And again, as I mentioned before, these cases will tend to occur hours to as long as a day after the near-drowning event. The signs that you could potentially see would be irritability, lethargy, or severe cough that doesn't remit, or difficulty breathing. If your child has had a near-drowning episode, and then hours to a day later starts to develop these symptoms, you should go to the emergency room immediately. Uh, however, again, to stress, if your child just inhales a little bit of water and cough, you don't have to worry about this. Uh, the best way, of course, to prevent any kind of drowning episode is to make sure that children never swim unsupervised, and pools should always be gated and locked. Thank you for listening.